my name is Matt Scarf, and today we're going to look at the skill of measuring a distance on the mountains in poor visibility when walking with a group. This is a vital skill for the mountain leader syllabus. The two ways of measuring how far you've walked in poor visibility include pacing and Naismith's rule. So what we're going to do in this podcast is we're going to look at first of all how do you accurately assess how many steps it takes you to cover 100 metres and how should you adjust this based on the different terrain that you come across. These involve skills such as sidestepping. In Naismith's rule we're going to briefly look over the different timings that it takes you when walking with a group at different paces. Now this podcast goes on the presumption that you already know how to accurately take a bearing on a map and how to walk on that bearing. It's also very useful if you know how to look at the immediate landscape around you and translate that onto the map so when you reach your point you know you're in the right place from your pacing. So let's have a look at pacing. Okay, so when you're first pacing out your distance over 100 metres, first of all you need to make sure the point that you're walking to is accurately 100 metres away. In this case, it's the telegraph pole just in the distance there. It's also ideal that you do this on even ground and also fairly flat ground, just so you have a really good baseline measurement off of which to work off of when you come across more uneven terrain. Okay, so there's two ways you can count your paces when walking the 100 metres. One is to count every single pace you take. This would be like this. One, two, three. And you continue in this manner for the whole 100 metres. The method that I personally prefer is double pacing. And this is where you count on every second step. So, for example, this would look like this. One, two. The reason why I prefer this method is because it involves less counting so the numbers you're counting up to are lower and in conditions of poor visibility in charge of a group it can be quite stressful so you need to give yourself every chance to simplify things. So here I am at my start mark in line with the bag which is 100 metres away from the telegraph pole. So I'm counting every double pace and I'll see how many paces it takes me. 1 66 67 68 69 so, it's taken me 69 paces in order to do this 100 metres. You should do this several times so you get an idea of just how many paces it takes you to cover 100 metres. If you're varying by one or two paces each time, then just do three runs and take an average. If you're varying, varying by more than three or four paces, then really you need to check your stride length and make sure you are walking with your natural gait. What happens if you're covering distances of more than 100 metres? How do you make sure you keep count of every hundred you cover? There's a few ways of doing this and basically the best way to start is to stop every hundred meters consciously and most people will pick up several stones or they may have certain beads on their compass string to which they can pull down and mark off each hundred meters. But if I now have to travel 300 meters, at the end of this first hundred meters I have three stones so I take one out. Every hundred meters I do this and so then I know when I have no stones left, I've reached the distance that I was planning to get to. Okay, so what happens when the ground isn't totally flat and free of obstacles? First of all, on different gradient slopes, it really just comes down to experience in knowing how many strides it takes you to cover a certain distance. For example, some people who are very experienced could look at a slope, such as this hill here, and if they were walking up it, they could say, well, that's going to take me 80 strides as opposed to my usual 65. But really that just comes with experience and you have to practice it. When you're in poor visibility, you often want to stick to your bearing as best as possible and not veer off away from it. So if you have a slight obstacle such as this rock in your way that may potentially chop your pace up, there's a very simple way to deal with it. If I'm approaching the step, I might count my paces something like this. One, two, three. So what you do is you just take an extra couple of little small steps in order to get over the rock and just approximate if you've covered a stride. It's a very simple way of just approximately measuring the distance you've covered. If you come across a bigger obstacle, sometimes you may have to sidestep around the obstacle. And this is something we'll cover now. Okay, so in poor visibility and when you're trying to stick to a bearing, 
quite often you can come across a big obstacle such as this rock. And quite often, especially when you're in charge of a group, you don't want to be starting clambering over rocks with your group as it just adds an extra hazard. So the best way to deal with this is to sidestep around it. So, if I'm walking up to it on my bearing, let's say I have to take 50 paces before I reach the point I want to reach, and this pops up in the middle. So I might do something like this. I might be on pace 26 when I reach here, so I'm still only about halfway to where I want to be. So in order to get around, I remember the number 26, and I'll take some side steps around the obstacle. So, one, two, three. Now I'm clear of the obstacle, I'll start my pacing again. 27, 28. Once I've come past the obstacle, in order to get back on the bearing I wanted to, I'll take the same amount of side steps back onto course. One, two, three. And again, I'll now pick up my pacing and carry on to 50. It's an effective way and quite an accurate way of scooting around uh, certain obstacles that may come in the way and affect the safety of your group. Okay, so sometimes when you're leading a group, the navigation might not be that difficult, even though the visibility is quite poor. It's also very key that you're constantly keeping an eye on your group to make sure all the members are safe, as they can easily go missing in the fog, or if you should get caught out in the night time, they go missing in the dark. So, a way to measure your distance or approximately how far you've walked is to use Naismith's rule. Naismith's rule is particularly useful because it still allows you to keep your attention on the group whilst just making a simple timing when walk walking at a certain pace. The pace you walk at should be um, equivalent to your group's level of fitness and really as a mountain leader you should practice walking at these paces so you know how it feels to cover, for example, 4 kilometres in one hour. So, let's have a look at Naismith's rule. William Naismith was a Scottish mountaineer who was one of the founding members of the Scottish Mountaineering Council. One of his most famous things that he devised was Naismith's rule. This is a, a table that shows you just how far the average group will cover based on the basis that a group will cover 5 kilometres for every hour they are walking on the flat. This equates to approximately 3 miles. So if I was to cover 1.2 kilometres on my map without any height gain, then I would expect to cover this in 14 minutes. For every contour line I cross, I would add 1 minute, so for every 100 metres, it would be 10 minutes, because each contour is 10 metres of height. So, if I were to walk 1.2 kilometres, and I were to ascend 240 metres over this period of distance, then this would work out at 38 minutes to cover the 1.2 kilometres. Obviously this will change depending on your group's fitness, the length of the day's walk, and also the load you are carrying. In order to assess the group's fitness, you can use Tranter's correction, which allows you to adjust Naismith's rule appropriately. However, as a mountain leader, you don't always have this time, and sometimes you just have to assess your group's fitness along the way. Therefore, it is very important that you learn to recognise what pace you're walking at, so you can judge these distances accurately when timing. So, in summary, we've learned today about different pacing strategies and how to time how far you've walked with your group. The only way to get really good at this is just to practice, and practice in different terrains and in different conditions. You also need to make sure that you practice walking on a bearing accurately whilst pacing and can concentrate on both things. Really, it just comes down to experience now, but these are the basic tools that you should, have, that you should now know in order to use them. Firstly, how many paces does it take you to cover 100 metres? And how do you adjust these based on the terrain and the different gradients and slopes? Second of all, can you accurately sidestep an obstacle and then go back on course for your bearing? It's also important to understand Naismith's rule, as I say, just because when you're working with groups, it's important to keep an eye on the group and you may not have the, um, you may not have a group of high ability and therefore concentrating on a bearing and pacing and ignoring them can become a very dangerous task. That's all. Thank you for listening.